For Criminal Media's Policy, I'm Tabi Shomulikai, former journalist and author Ebe Dumisa, joins me to unpack his latest book titled Anton Rupert, The Life of a Business Icon. This revised edition is an updated version of the biography published in 2004. So, Mr. Dumisa, what are some of the new things readers can look forward to? Well, some of the... Uh... You know, ongoing events have been updated and there's a whole new chapter at the end of the book detailing what uh, Dr. Rupert would have thought of today's politics uh, in view of his business philosophy of partnership and coexistence. And uh, some uh, details have been abridged, I think especially the role of Johan Rupert because uh, I say in the, in the foreword that uh, he probably deserves his own biography. And how was it working on this edition? And what are some of the interesting factors that surprised you about Anton Rupert? Well, firstly, the way he started out, you know, he, he initially he was uh, part of the Afrikaner empowerment movement of the 30s and 40s. He started out with the Redingstadt Bond, which is... Uh, well, the name basically means it's a bond of people trying to save the Afrikaners. You know, there was this was after the war years, after the Great Depression. Rupert grew up in the Depression. He didn't have money to study for medicine. He had to go to Pretoria University. So there was a widespread poverty. And uh, the uh, Redingstadt Bond actually said that a people should save themselves. And uh, that was a great motivation for Rupert. And then, having worked for the Red Spot Bond, he opened a, a dry cleaning store in Pretoria. It wasn't a, a big success, but nor was it a failure. But, and then he moved to Johannesburg to start the Fuhrbrand, a tobacco manufacturer. And that was with only 10 pounds of his own money. That's the equivalent of 10 grand today. And from there on, the business just mushroomed and it went all over the world. And talk to us about Rupert's clashes with Hendrik Verwood and how he handled the apartheid framework. Also, what convictions from Rupert's side caused those uh, major disagreements? Well, uh, Rupert basically thought, uh, you know, this whole chapter about small businesses in the, in the book, and he thought, I think it was confirmed by none other than the present president of South Africa who said in his State of the Nation, everybody knows that governments don't create jobs. Rupert thought small businesses do, and um, that was part of his major clash with uh, with Verwood. He wanted to open up a, a factory for uh, colored people under the ownership of colored people in Paul, and he went to Verwood to explain what he was doing. Verwood said, well, eventually, uh, is the board going to be uh, colored and the management? And uh, so whites will have to work under them. And he said, well, in that case, I would close the factory. That was the first major clash. The second one was uh, about the Transkei. Rupert wanted to invest uh, in the Transkei because he thought, you know, it's, it's underdeveloped. There are no major industries and so on. And uh, he should open factories in the Transkei. He went to Favut, explained to him, Favut was furious because he said it would be neo-colonialism, uh, he called it imperial domination of business and so on. <laughs> uh, Rupert thought it was rid ridiculous and he clashed with Favut and uh, Favut didn't allow him to, to open up anything in the Transco. He had these so-called border industries and uh, you know, if you put them on the border, do you develop the uh, territory itself? You don't. And uh, Fugut also said bringing uh, white industrialists into the homelands would create little Hong Kongs around South Africa. And I made the case that I wish we had little Hong Kongs around South Africa today instead of the, of the basket case of Zimbabwe, for instance. And Rupert found his own trajectory and stuck to it, despite many attempts from right-wingers to frustrate him. So can you tell us more about Rupert's stance on business? He created the Small Business Development Corporation, today Business Partners. It's still ongoing. 
And uh, that was a major achievement. I mean, that was black empowerment long before the present government and very successful. Uh, he created thousands of young black entrepreneurs. Uh, and there's a whole chapter in the book about this. And can we say Rupert benefited from apartheid rule? No, I wouldn't. Uh, if you can look at it the other way, you know, apartheid forced him to go outside the country. Uh, the major part of his money came from abroad uh, when he started out in Europe and uh, uh, elsewhere in the world, Australia and so on. Uh, he expanded worldwide. If you uh, reason that Rupert benefited from apartheid, I would say he, uh, he actually did not. He, uh, he had to go outside the country to make his money. So why did he stay out of politics? Because of his favorite for instance. And very early on, while he was still a student, he uh, attended a meeting by Oswald Pirro, a very right-wing politician at that time. And uh, when he came back in Pretoria, his uh, Pirro's uh, sister, um, Mrs. Murdoch, yes, she was the wife of the architect of the uh, Fort Tracker Monument, for instance. She asked him, uh, why do you go around with people like Oswald Pirro, her own brother? And he said, if that is politics, I don't want to have anything to do with it. And he was, you know, he was several times, even uh, Prince Putelese asked him to, to come into politics. He said, no, it's a different discipline. And uh, I think the two sh should stay apart. And lastly, Mr. Jumisa, what are you hoping to achieve with this book? Well, I hope the politicians would read it and uh, realize you know, the, the control of the state of the economy is mostly a disaster. I've been behind the Iron Curtain. I saw what was happening there. You know, in, in the communist countries, there's nothing like, or there used to be nothing like market research, looking at the market, uh, reaching the, the, the consumer and so on. Uh, in that way, the free market system is far and away superior, as has been shown by China, for instance, when Deng Xiaoping changed to the market system. He had this adage that it doesn't matter what uh, color the cat is, as long as it catches the, the mice. And I think that's very important. Government should realize they must create the uh, environment for business to flourish and create jobs and wealth and pro prosperity. That was Ebed Dumisa speaking to Crimea Media's Polity about Anton Rupert, the life of a business icon.